Hello everyone, it is Teresa from Teresa Select Spot for All Things Art, where I love sharing art from my heart and teaching creators and crafters how to paint for fun and profit. Hello, hello, hello. Let me put a hi in there. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to um, March's tutorial. How is everyone? I have um, shared the supply list. I have shared uh I think two different size tracers because that's what I usually do. I've put hi in the comments. So if you hop on, let me know where you're watching from. Let me move that so I can see. Let me close that. Okay, here we go. Hello, 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 everyone. So what is new? Aside from me freezing, I know I'm always whining about the weather, right? Yeah, it's a little chilly. And then the heat doesn't really work that well in this room. I didn't put the heater on, but anyway, hello. I have my tracer. So I'm calling this about teaching you guys the bumblebee. So today I painted 25 bumblebees for something that I can't tell you about yet, but I will be. Um, it's coming out. But anyway, so I'm like, you know what? That's perfect because this is the one I'm doing tonight. Totally not, you know, they were not related at all. So it's weird that it's a coincidence that, that that's what I painted today. That's what I'm painting tonight. So here's the tracer. Um, I'm going to trace the bumblebee on, but I'm going to show you guys the way I paint a bumblebee. Okay. So we're going to, you know, paint the picture, paint the fence post. I'm going to show you the, the background and the shading and whatnot. Um, but more importantly, it's going to be about the bumblebee. Okay. So let me turn you guys around and don't forget, this will be, this stays up here in the group. Um, all my tutorials, if you're new to me, all my tutorials are to the left where it says guides or yours might say it up above where it says guides and each guide is in there. I've been, oh, sorry, doing this for about a year and a half now. And um, let me see if I can put this back. And so there's about 18 to 20 um, video tutorials in there at this point let me for you to go back and watch at your leisure paint not paint watch me paint whatever it is you would like to do okay they all come with um a supply list and a tracer so there we go so anyway i am going to paint tonight in my um art book that i painted I have a lot of canvases, but as you can see, I have a lot of art in here that I've been working on, stuff that I paint, examples, practices, whatever. So I'm going to be painting in here tonight. It's a 9 by 12 but I'm still going to use the same tracer. This tracer is fine for 8 and a half, um, by uh, 8 by 10 or 11 by 14 You just maybe want to extend the fence a little bit, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. So let me um, pop my graphite paper. I'm going to graphite paper the shiny side down, and I'm going to slip it under here between my tracer and my surface, whether that's a canvas or you're using a book or you're just working on scrap paper, whatever it is. And now I'm going to trace in um, my design. Okay. So how is everyone doing? I feel like it's been so long. I skipped February, if you guys remember that or not. And so now I feel like it's been so long since I've been on with you guys. So because my tracer is a little shorter, I'm just gonna bring the edges of the fence out a little bit. I'm gonna come out here to make this a little wider. This part will just be a little bit deeper on the bottom. And this side part comes out a little bit also, okay? If you're concerned about drawing this circle, you can use a bottom of a paint jar or something else that's totally round that you can use so you can get a nice circle. Or, you know what? You don't even have to worry about getting a nice circle. It's up to you. So I'm just going in here and I'm tracing in all of the petals and then I'm going to put the stem in that also is going to go a little bit oh rip my paper a little bit longer than my surface 
And then I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put the B head in here. And then I'm just gonna basically put in a little shape where my bee is gonna go. I know it's gonna be on the top of the flower, um, but I'm not gonna necessarily do the bee exactly like that, okay? So let's pop this off, put my tape back, put my tracer aside, fold this up, and there we have it, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get out some white. Hey Angie, how are you? Hey Mara, it's nice to see you. Just popped in to say hi. Hi. Oh, my white's stuck. All right, this is not gonna come out. So I have a different white here. I'm gonna have to unclog that. There we go. There, we got some white. And then I have this little light blue. You can use uh, winter blue. You can use baby blue. You can use patina. Um, any other light blue that you want your sky to be, it's totally up to you. This is, I believe, um, baby blue. I thought it was light blue. It's baby blue. So I'm just going to put that out. Okay. And then I'm going to get, um, I guess I'll use this brush. It's a little bigger. I'm going to wet it first. I don't always wet my brushes. Unless my brushes are brand new, I don't always wet them first. Do we have a good angle here? Yes, we do. Okay. So, I'm going to load my brush with some white. Some dry paint on there. Let's get rid of that. And when I load my brush, you want to put a little pressure on your paintbrush. You don't want to be wimpy about it and just be like, ooh. No. You want to put a little pressure. I go to the side of my puddle. I put some pressure on my bristles because you want the paint to get up into the bristles of your brush. And when you put some pressure on it, it flares out. And then I'm going to pick up some blue on the corner. And it's going to mix as we start to paint. So I'm just going to come in here and I want to paint in my sky and all around my design. And your sky can be as dark or as light as you want it to be. So every time I'm gonna pick up white and then I'm gonna scoop up some blue with the corner and I'm gonna come back to my surface. Now this looks sticks out here, it's kind of messy. This is the sheet I use, it's a piece of plastic I got from somewhere and I just use it in my book to protect my next page. So you don't have to worry about that. I know it might look a little messy or crazy to you guys like now, what is she doing with that? But that's what I'm doing with that. That's just here to protect my next clean page. And I use this. Hello, Lolly. Hello, Kim. How are you? So my friend Kim from Lolly Doodles, she has started a um, watercolor Wednesday. And so before, when I was getting ready to do this, I was watching her watercolor Wednesday. Watercolors are new to me, you guys. So see, we're always learning, learning from each other. So yes, I want to... Um, Pick up white all the time, and then I'm just going to pick up a corner of blue, and I'm just kind of blending it in. And I do the blend in like an X style or a cross style diagonal. So I'll go one way, and then I'll go the other way. I like to come in, and I like to outline my elements. I'll do that what standing up on my brush or you can do that with a liner if it's easier for you and then I just go back to filling it in I won't outline the same the whole entire thing that little Meg in there because it'll dry and then we won't be able to blend and you'll just have a outline on your art so I just outline a little bit as I go along this way as I do the background I can blend mm -hmm. so I'm pick up some white a corner of blue, then I'm gonna come back in here. Now, I'm not being totally careful. I mean, I don't wanna make a total mess out of it, but you don't have to be totally, totally careful or mindful of your petals, okay? Because this is acrylic paint. You can basically fix anything if you're patient enough and wait for it to dry. And when I come back in and we're gonna paint our flower, we're just gonna pick up our acrylic paint for our flower and we're gonna go right over. So if we got into our flower a little bit there while we were doing our outline, it is totally okay. Outline that a little bit. 
so you don't have to worry about and I didn't even you know I did the B here I just put a, a rectangle in there for my B it's just right now it is a placeholder I did a class last night and we did um, wine bottles with the fairy lights and we did florals on the wine bottle and they came really cute but when I teach daisies I teach a daisy whereas let's visualize where we want the center of our daisy to be and we're gonna put yellow and then we want um, I think I've taught daisies in this class before so you could probably if you went into the guides you would find it so you're gonna put a dot and then when you do a daisy or how I teach it oh this here's a daisy that's so funny so you're gonna put a yellow dot and then all this is a very old shirt this is like one of my originals but when you do your strokes for your daisy they all go in and I said to everyone the yellow don't worry about the yellow the yellow is a placeholder we just need to visualize where the center of our daisy is and we're just gonna pull all our strokes in to that center and I do a daisy like a clock so I'll do 12 6 3 9 1 2 4 5 whatever the clock face okay and then everybody's like but I messed up my yellow I can't see my yellow my yellow my yellow I know it's just a placeholder we just want it there because then after we go back and you don't see what it looks like with all your petals doing this into the center because then you come back and you put a nice center in your flower that was my placeholder story about my my bee. So my bee up there looks it, it looks a little bit like a thanks Angie. It looks a little bit like a salt shaker right now, right? And we're like, why you got a salt shaker on top of your flower? Okay, so I have my background now. If you are painting with me, that is great. If you're not painting with me, that's great too, because um, these will be in the guides. This will be in the guide. It will stay here for you. You will have the tracer. You can back, come back and watch it, paint it at your leisure, whatever you like to do. Okay? I'm just, oh, I have a, a do I have another brown? Oh, I thought I had a, maybe this is the only brown I have. So I'm getting out some dark brown, plus I have some burnt umber, and I'm going to put out a little bit of fawn. And fawn is just a tan. You, if you have a tan, if you have um, desert sand, if you have um, cafe latte, which is a folk art color, that works. Or iced coffee, you guys know me and my iced coffee. That would work too. We just want two different values. We want a really dark brown, and then we want a light brown. And I washed my brush, and I'm going to give it a squeeze. Okay. And we work our painting um, in layers. So I did the background and now we're going to do our fence post and that will clean up any place where we might have gone out of the lines or whatever with our background. And then we're going to add our main element, which is our flower and the bumblebee that I'm going to show you guys how I do a bumblebee. Okay. So I want to load up my brush with the browns and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm putting a little pressure on my brush, I'm picking up the dark brown, and then I'm just going to scoop with the corner of the tan. Now I'm going to start here because I think this would be easier to show you guys. I need a couple of lines which I didn't have. Grab a pencil. These boards go over. This board is in the back. These boards are over to the front. So I just wanted to do that. Okay. I'm going to start here because it's easy to show you guys. We want these lines to be vertical. I might have to switch to a smaller brush. Sometimes you have to um, follow the shape, obviously, of your element and I'm doing that now. But when you're coming in here to paint the fence post, you want your strokes to be vertical, okay? You can 
paint the whole thing brown and then come back and add in some tan for the little highlights. I tend to paint a little quick. I like to do it simultaneously. Since I do one stroke, I like to load both colors on my brush and then come in and do them at the same time. If your fence post starts getting a little light, you can pick up a little bit of more dark brown and vice versa. When this is still the base coat, we're gonna come back and add in all kinds of details. Okay, so I'm just picking up and again, I'm going around the outline. I stand my brush up on the chisel edge to do that. But then I wanna come in and I'm just gonna pull in these parts of the painting with my brush going vertically. We want all our strokes. And I'm picking up a little bit of the blue here because it wasn't dry, but I'm not gonna worry about that. Okay, so again, I wanna follow the outline of the fence. But then I wanna come in here and I wanna make sure all my strokes are vertical. And we have a little bit of highlighting and a little bit of oh, shading going on because I used both colors on my brush. We're going to add some detail to that, but that's good for now. Okay, so I'm going to go over and I'm going to do the other one now. Loading it up with this dark brown, a little corner in the light brown. And again, we're going to do the same thing. So I'm going to hold my brush up on the chisel edge to get a nice outline. And then I'm going to come in here. Now our flower stem is here. Just a little thin. We're going to go back over that in the end with the green. And so I'm going to try and skip it, but if I get some on it, like you see I did, I'm not going to worry about it. You know, sometimes we want to do all the things we want to create, we want to paint, we want to Mod Podge, we want to do all the things. And then sometimes it gets so complicated or we thought we had time and then people need us or want us or the phone rings or we get a text or something. So I like really, I like to keep my tutorials to less than an hour. Ideally, if I wasn't jibber jabbering, they could eat, be way less than an hour, but you know, we like to talk and catch up. And really for people who are pressed for time or they have family responsibilities, especially us, us women, right? Us, us women folk always being pulled in 15 different directions. Um, maybe we don't have a lot of time, but we saw a project that we really want to do. And we were like, oh, I could do that. I wish I had the time to do that. Well, you know what? Most of my paintings take, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. And I would like to think that everyone can take, you know, 45 minutes to an hour of their time and do something for themselves, whatever that is. Even if it's not painting, if it's flipping through a magazine, if it's taking a hot bath, whatever it is that you like to do. And if it, if it is creating, that's great. But whatever it is that you like to do, if you can take the time for yourself, 45 minutes, an hour, really, is that too much to ask? I don't think so. I really don't. Okay, so I have that base coated. As you can see, my stem over here, I'm not gonna worry about it, but I am going to pick up a little bit of the light, and I'm just lightly now pulling in some of this light and in this case, it's this fawn color on my wood, just to make it be like more of this wood appearance. 
If you guys didn't see, also, I think my friend Angie has the link. Um, tomorrow's the last day. I'm selling these really cute gnome um, kits. It's a gnome holding a balloon, and the balloon is an Easter egg, so they're Easter kits. They will ship on Monday. So it was a limited sale. Um, I have the link for that. We'll pop it in here if you guys are interested. It is $19 for the kit. And it includes shipping, but honestly, I don't think my website is listening to me. You know, sometimes we're a little tech challenged. So if it is charging shipping, I will be going back and um, giving out refunds. So it's a special price for Easter, and it's $19 for the complete kit, um, including shipping. And I only ship, if you're watching me from someplace else, I love you and I appreciate your, all your support, but I only ship to the U.S. Otherwise, I feel like it gets a little complicated. So when we did our fence posts, we made sure all of our lines went vertically. Now we did this crossbar on our fence, and I want it to go horizontally because this part of the fence is going sideways and this part of the fence is going up and down. Okay, so that's what we have. And again, I'm going to pick up a little bit of the light and I'm just going to use my chisel edge and put it in here a little bit. Now we're going to let that dry because we have other things to add. Ooh. So now I'm going to get out some dark green and some light green. I think I have a dark hauser here somewhere. Is this it? Oh, that's way too dark. That's black green. That's not gonna work. I'll use my um I'll use my thicket. It's uh folk art, but it it'll work. If I have any in here. Excuse me. There we go. And again, I want, hmm, let me use this for my uh, light avocado. Oh wait, here we go. Matcha green. Oh good. Hey collab gals, thank you. So if you're watching me from the collab gals, we got big surprises coming up for you guys. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but I was working on it today. Um, so anyway, I have out my two greens now. I have out a very dark green, and in this case, it's thicket. And then I have a lighter green, um, and this is matcha green. Okay, I'm gonna get out a little thin brush, and I'm going to again load my green up really, really well, and then scoop up a little bit of the light green, and I'm gonna come in here, and I don't wanna overblend my greens, so every time I'm gonna pick up the dark, I'm gonna pick up the light, and I'm using these little short baby strokes, little short sweeping strokes to fill in, put my hand in there, um, the stem for the flower. Okay. You don't have to do it in one swoop. And this way too, I'm not over blending the greens for my stem. And another, that's again, I did, told you it didn't really matter if you went over where your stem was with your brown paint. Because when we came back and put our stem in, it's gonna be just fine. Ooh. I do wanna fix this a little bit where I smudged the uh, brown so that's what I tell you guys it's acrylic paint it's all good I smudged the brown into there where it was sky and now I fixed it Ooh. so now we're going to start working on our flower and I'm going to get out royal fuchsia and then again we want a darker color and in this case, I have this um, flamingo. I'm going to use it. So I want a really deep pink like this fuchsia. And then I want a lighter pink. And in this case, I'm using flamingo. I could get a baby pink or something. But now I have my 
two pinks. Let me use this brush. Uh, no, this is, yeah, nope. I'm going to use this one. I think this is a number 10. It's about a quarter inch to a half an inch wide. It's a flat brush. And that's the brush I'm going to be using to do the flower petals. Okay. So I'm going to load up. Now I'm going to start with the lighter color. I'm just going to come in here. And I'm going to start filling in all my petals. And this is just the base coat. If I were painting this flower for me or for a project, I would probably be doing it a little bit different. But when I teach it, this is how I would teach something like this. I think um, I teach to beginners and then obviously if there are people that are on here watching and they're a little bit more experienced, they're going to paint the flower however they feel like it anyway. It doesn't matter. They're just here um, for the camaraderie or the inspiration where you all get inspired by one another. Um, I often watch people paint and I love to watch people paint. Then when it comes to me painting it, I paint it my own way anyway. So no two paintings could ever really look alike. Not that you, I'm not saying you should take other people's art. It's nice to be inspired by other people's art. You shouldn't take other people's art. Um, but they really don't look alike. And often my painters will tell me, mine doesn't look like yours. And I'm like, you know what? Sometimes mine doesn't look like mine. It's not supposed to look like mine. It's supposed to look like yours. I can never paint the same thing exactly the same more than once. No. Even in my listings, I'll be like, um, hand painted. No two are exactly alike. So now I have all this light pink on my brush. And I'm just going to pick up a little bit of the dark pink. And now we want to add in a little bit of the dark pink to the beginning of our petals. So I'm going to fill it with the pink. And I'm going to pick up some of the dark pink. And we just, I'm just swishing it in here. So the areas that are closer to the flower center are a little bit darker. And then as it goes out to the edge, it doesn't go quite to the edge. And then we have the light pink, which we put down to begin with at the tips. And you can do this opposite if you want. Okay. I am actually going to tiny bit I want it a little bit darker yet so I'm just going to put out a tiny bit I'm just going to darken this up just a tiny bit did you see it was like the head of a pin and now I'm pulling out this color I want to wipe my brush off a little bit and then I'll come back in. And now I'm using my brush on the chisel edge, which means standing up like this. And I'm pulling in now another layer of this bit of darker paint that I made just by adding a little bit of black to my Royal Fuchsia. So now we have different, many, many different shades of this pink going on here with our flower. I wanted a little bit more variation. So there we go. So I picked up a little bit of black and put it in there. And now I'm going to wash my brush. So don't forget, you guys, this recording will be here for you. It will get posted. You'll be able to see it and watch it. 
Um, you can stop it, pause it, go back, whatever you want to do. And I'll wash my brush a little bit. And now I'm going to go back and I'm going to pick up some of the dark brown again. And I'm going to fill in my center. And in doing it, I'm going to clean up my edges where maybe my petals went into the center a little bit. I want my center to be a little bit, I'm going to use some of this green lighter. And so if your petals went into your center a little bit, it's okay, because now that we come in here with the center of our flower, it gets all cleaned up. Okay. All right. So let me pick them up. What do you guys think so far? Okay, now we're gonna get into the fun part. Now we're gonna do our bumblebee and we're gonna start adding in our details and our shading for our fence post. So let me get out some nice, fresh, bright yellow. And this one's a little tricky. You might want to um, uh, practice this stroke. This is actually a one stroke leaf. It is the basis for many, many flowers and um, other, thanks Rose, and other um, strokes in uh, one stroke. I'm a certified one stroke decorative painter. So I'm gonna just grab a little bit of scrap paper. I have, actually, I have a page up in here that I've been working on, right? Can I come over here a little bit? Yeah. So. I'm gonna hold my book up. I'm gonna load my brush. Now this is about a half inch wide flat brush. And I'm just loading it with yellow. Okay, now this is the way I do, the pinks are beautiful. Thank you, Angie. So this is the way I do bumblebees. It is also a one stroke leaf and is the basis for other flowers in one stroke, okay? So I'm gonna stand my brush up on the chisel edge. I'm gonna put some pressure into it. I'm going to push it on an angle, and then I'm gonna lift up. And now you're probably saying that's gonna be a bumblebee or that's a leaf. Yes, you'd be surprised. So we're gonna stand it up. We're gonna push, apply some pressure to our brush, and go up, okay? Okay, I'm going to load my brush. I'm going to come over here where my bee is. I'm going to have to fit him in here somehow. There we go. I'm going to have to do two coats because um, it went over my pink. And we want to really be able to see our bee. So there is my bee's body. I know it doesn't look like a bee yet, but it will. Okay. Hey, Amy. Okay, now I'm going to add the bee's head. So I want need a little bit more black. Okay. I'm gonna use the back of my brush I'm going to get a decent amount of paint on the tip of my brush. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to use my brush to draw in a circle for the bee's head. Now you see it's starting to come to life. Okay. Now I'm going to get out my liner brush and come back to my black. When I use my liner brush, I like to give it a little twirl. So the tip of my liner brush has a point on it. Okay. I'm going to give a little dab and pull and a little dab and pull and now we have our little bee antennas. Okay. 
Now I want to let my yellow dry a little bit. So I'm going to go over here to my black. And I'm going to start adding in a little bit of this shading or this outlining to this side of this fence post. And so it's kind of bringing this fence post to the front and setting this horizontal post to the back. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And you don't have to, if you don't have a steady hand, you don't have to um, do it in one stroke. I'm doing it in little increments that kind of overlap as I work my way up to the top. Okay, do the same thing over here. And then again, I'm going to do a little bit along the top here and just a little bit along the top here. That adds a little bit of shading and that's what gives us the illusion that these parts are in the front, these uprights are in the front, and that other one is in the back. Then I'm going to take the back of my brush again and I'm going to use it here. And these are going to be our nail holes and this is what is holding up our fence. Okay. And then we're gonna let that dry a little bit. And part of my fake wood, I'm gonna lightly come in here and I'm just gonna drag in very, very light touch. I'm barely, barely, oh, gotta do this side too, touching the paper and I'm pulling in just a little bit of black shade to our, what's supposed to be wood fence posts. Hardly touching, okay? All right, now that our yellow is mostly dry and I have the black on my brush, we're gonna move to the what? One, two, three, fourth step of our bumblebee, okay? So I want to get a liner brush, and you could practice this too. I'm going to take my liner brush, see if this is dry, I can rest my hand, and I'm just going to add little bits, little bitty, 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 slash marks. This is how we add The, uh, the black bands to our B. So we have the top. Hi, Terry. It's nice to see you. So we have the top one, the middle one, and then we have the bottom one. And then, of course, we want the bottom one to stick out a little bit for our stinger. So there's our bumblebee. Now we want to let this dry a little bit so that um, we can add his wings. But while that's drying, I'm gonna pick up some of this fresh yellow and I'm gonna put some highlights of this yellow into my flower center. I'm gonna put some yellow ones and some white ones into the center. Then I just want to add a little bit of white highlight to some of my petals. And I'm just going in, I'm putting a little bit of white on one edge of each of my petals. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to give a little bit of highlight under here to my center. And then I want to continue. I want to have a little bit. I'm trying not to put my hand in any wet paint. A little bit of highlight to my stem. 
I'm going to take my little bit of highlight again and put a little bit, oh, need a little bit more, a little bit onto the nails. Okay. Okay. The last thing we have to do is the leaves. I'm going to hold this guy up again because we're waiting for him to dry. And not the, the wings, but they're leaves too. So there we go. This is what we have so far. Just a very, very simple painting. we got the sky going on. A little bit of the faux wood for the fence. The flower, which is not a full flower. But the point of this was... Um, I could teach I could teach you guys a bumblebee and I can get out a piece of paper and we could paint a bumblebee five times. But what's the fun of that? So I want to teach the bumblebee and here we did it with this. Okay. So again, this is another um, one stroke technique. It takes a little bit of practice. I'm trying to get the brush I need here. It goes. It takes a little bit of practice. But I'm gonna show it to you. If you guys practice, you guys can do it. Um, the way I paint is a skill that anybody um, can learn if they want to learn and practice. And your, your painting, your painting, it does not have to look like mine, you guys. My paintings never look like mine. I told you, look at this shirt. I mean, this is one of my original paintings here. I mean, this, this, this I did not too long ago. So that's not so bad. It's hard on material. This is one of my originals. My daisies have gotten much better. My ladybugs have gotten much better. I mean, this has been washed a million times, too. But, you know, it comes, you guys. If you want to come, it comes. And, you know, if you're busy, like we are, right? Women wearing a million hats. Um, you want to take some time for yourself and paint or create or do whatever. I got you. Because I'm all about uh, painting it fast, getting done, not sweating the small stuff and just doing our thing, right? Okay, so I turned you guys back around. So again, I am going to come over here with this same half inch wide brush and I'm gonna load it up with white, totally. Totally, totally, totally load it up with the white. Then I'm just gonna scoop a little bit. See that? I mean, you can't even, it doesn't even look like a ticket so small, see that? But I want to work that into my brush too. So you see I'm creating this little runway. It's mostly white and it has this little bit of black. That little bit of black there is where I scooped up that tiny, tiny bit of black. So I'm going to go get some more white because the white is what's really important. The black is important too, but you, do, you don't need very much. Okay. So I have my white and my little bit of black on there. You can't hardly see it. Okay. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to start on my chisel edge. I'm going to push around. I'm going to make like a balloon shape. And then I'm going to do that again. And there you go. There you have your wings. I don't know. Can you see that? There you go. And so it's basically, I can do it right over it again because it's just the black and the white and the gray. Let me see if I can get it better. We're gonna stand it up. We're gonna put some pressure on our brush and twist it between our thumb and forefinger. And then we're gonna stand it up again. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the next one. Twist it around and stand it up. And there we have our wings. And that is it. So anyway, you guys, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me. I hope you liked the class. Like I said, um, this will be in here in the guides. I don't know what guide we're up to yet. Look, a mess, mess. I don't know what guide we're up to yet, but um, we're up there. You guys like my haircut? I should do it before and after. Did you see how shaggy I was yesterday or when was it? Monday? Holy moly. Went to get my haircut today and there was like this, I don't know what was going on up there. 
and um, it was a new girl. So I showed her a picture and she was like, oh. I'm like, yeah, it's okay. I want it this short. And she was like, okay. Thank you, Rose. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So yeah, it feels so much better with my haircut. It does get a little cold because it's still chilly out, but I'm gonna stop whining. But yeah, she was like, oh. I'm like, it's okay, it's fine. Just cut it, just cut it, ch -ch -ch -ch. cut it, cut it. Anyway, I love you guys. Um, this one is the next Zoom next week. You can find it in events. Um, and then the Easter kit, tomorrow is the last day if you want the gnome Easter egg kit. Uh, tomorrow's the last day for those. They're going to ship out on Monday. I want everybody to be able to have them to paint them before Easter. Um, the link is in there. We can drop it again if you need it. Or you go to my um, website at thesilhouettespot.com. Love you guys, and I will talk to you soon.